Welcome back to the main stage, everybody, here at API World. Uh, we have our next uh, networking break in which we have our fireside chat uh, coming up here, our VIP fireside chat. Um, we've got uh, special guests, Eric Newcomer, CTO at WSO2, and Kyle Fowler. He is the Director of Developer and uh, Consumer Experience at Foursquare. Guys, you want to join us here on the main stage? Okay. Hey, John. Hey, Kyle. Hey, Eric. Hey, John. hey Kyle. Hey. How's it going? Good to see you guys both. Um, yeah. So uh, we're going to keep this pretty informal. Uh, this is one of our VIP fireside chats that we do here at our shows. Um, the topic this time is API strategy. Um, technically, the, uh, the the topic that we're discussing is uh, something generally like uh, metrics and KPIs for measuring API products and project success over the years. And then how do you think API project success uh, should be measured? So. Why don't we take the official question first, and then we'll just kind of branch it out from there. Um, so, Eric, you want to uh, go first? Let's do some quick introductions, uh, uh, both of you guys, um, and then uh, we'll go ahead and uh, get to that get to that uh, question. Okay, sure, John. Thanks. Yeah, Eric Newcomer, CTO of WSO2, joined uh, just about a year ago. After uh, before that, spent about ten years financial services, and before that, had a similar CTO role at Iona Technologies. So. For me, it's a bit back to the future. I was in technology, into financial services, and back to technology. Yeah, great to have you, Eric. Kyle? Yeah, I'm our, uh, Kyle Fowler. I'm our Director of Engineering for Developer and Consumer Products at Forceware. I've uh, been with the company for almost 10 years now, uh, working mostly on our developer side. Perfect. Okay, we'll uh, jump back to you, Eric, on the um, metrics and KPI for measuring API project success. Um, what are your thoughts on that? How do you guys measure API project success? How should it be measured? Uh, let's start with this. Well, some of it's going to be empirical. Some of it's going to be measuring the stats, and the analytics that you collect. So first of all, it's very important when you're publishing APIs, especially external APIs, to turn on the analytics to get the data and look, be able to look through it and see how many people are using it, what's the usage rate. Uh, you and I have to make sure it's a good experience everybody has. You know, need to make sure it's going to scale and you get the response time that you want. You got to check all those things. You got to check uh, how it's being used. And uh, you know, on the other side, uh, empirically, or uh, you might say in terms of a user experience, you want to make sure you're giving them a good user experience in there. I think you want to be able to check what kind of feedback you're getting from from your customers and talk to them. So I think there's there's the kinds of measurements where you're collecting the statistics and seeing what the usage rates are, seeing what their volumes are, uh, seeing what the stickiness might be for them. And on the other side, you've got to get some soft data from talking to consumers of the APIs and make sure they're they're getting what they need out of it. Yeah, Kyle, what are your thoughts on uh, API project success? If for us, I think we kind of take a two-prong approach. Um, you know, we we have a free a free version of our developer product and a paid version. So um, it's both you know recurring revenue, uh, how many customers are willing to pay for the API product, and then on the you know more independent software developer side, uh, our engagement with the community, um, you know, number of Stack Overflow issues created around the API engagement. Um, and then all the things that Eric mentioned around latency responses, things of that nature. Um, but from a business perspective, we want to grow, you know, different metrics based on uh, different sides of the business, where you want to grow our uh, independent usage as well as our recurring revenue business. Yeah, and we, we want to be able, to, as a vendor, a supplier of API management software, we want to be able to support all those those kinds of metrics for for you when you. I'm not that you're a customer of ours, but for customers who are interested in those metrics, especially the value metrics, the consumption, the monetization, very important. Yeah, and I think uh, you know both of you guys kind of come at it from uh, different perspectives, right? I, I think um, you know as far as uh, Foursquare goes, Kyle, correct me if I'm wrong. You guys, uh, you know, create a API product, but it's it's um, it's more of a product that uh, you guys are monetizing your APIs. And then Eric at WSO2 now, um, it's more about helping companies with their APIs on, on the other side of it. Um, exactly. And so, you know, coming at it from two different perspectives, I think, 
um, API projects can be, you know, both from a, a money making engine for a company, um, but also uh, software that helps companies monetize those API projects that they have internally or those those uh, uh, that data that they have internally as well. Um, let's talk a little bit about some of the most common challenges facing uh, a team working on API projects. Um, and what advice would you give some of those teams um, facing some of those challenges? Uh, Kyle, we're going to start with you this time. All right. Well, I can just read a, read a slide from my upcoming talk in, in an hour here, uh, since that's the title of one of those slides. Um, you know, I think for me, building APIs, one of the biggest challenges is general usability for customers. Uh, I think a lot of APIs success comes on how easy it is to use and how well it solves the user experiences or the challenges that your customers are trying to solve. If an API is hard to use, hard to understand, is inconsistent, they're just going to churn and find something else that uh, is easier to work with. And I think it's like, you know, for me, making those decisions up front, making sure that the developer experience of using your product, uh, you keep that bar high, will have you know, a lasting impact on the success of the product. Eric? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And now it's more about the developer than ever and providing good developer experience. We're spending a lot of time trying to improve our products to make them very easy for our developers to, to use uh, for just those reasons. I would also add that, um, but, you know, along the lines of a best practice sort of general generalization is to start with the kind of service that the business is providing. You know, Kyle, working for Foursquare, you have an API that provides capabilities for businesses. And that API design you're talking about that's easy to use needs to be aligned very well with the functionality of the business that you're providing. And I think some, some of our customers don't get that as well as, as you've articulated it, uh, Kyle. I think sometimes they'll start with the other end and say, I've got a function I want to expose out as an API. And they may not think about well, how the customer sees that service from the business point of view. They'll think I'm just going to expose out this technical capability with an API. And of course, they're going to want to use it because we use it. But it's a different ball game once you cross that boundary between internal systems and the external systems, start making things customer facing, you really got to think about the, the uh, business service you're providing with that API. Yeah, uh, and for us, yeah, Riff here, uh, you know, our, our original API product was the same API that Power Arkans applicants. Uh, so we built it for us uh, and happened to expose it to others. And as we've gone along, you know, we feel like the, the growth of that API kind of plateaued because it was so tightly tied to how we saw the product and needed to shift our thinking to how our customers wanted to interact with our API products and can make changes to address that gap. Yeah, a lot of people go, th go through that journey. We had the same challenge when I was at City with our APIs. Something else uh, may be important to mention in this context is standards because uh, customers who are going to use your API are going to expect that it become a standard, a web standard, if nothing else. But now we have other standards, uh, async API standards and GraphQL and webhooks. And I think when we're thinking about providing these, uh, as much as we can adhere to the standard as closely as possible, I think it makes it also easier for customers to understand and consume something. Yeah, I think when we when we talk about and Kyle, you, you mentioned this here, um, talking about API design, talking about our strategies around APIs and company strategies, a lot of it does start with um, or should start with developer experience um, from the perspective that, you know, we have running running the, sh the shows that we do. We we work with a lot of developers. Um, you're running the developer team over there on the API side. Um, how important is developer experience to the design of APIs? Does it, I mean, you know, does it matter 100%? Um, and then, you know, Eric, you can chime in here too. You, know, you, you mentioned you need to have um, uh, pick up and uptake on the business side as well, right? So you, even if you have a, a perfectly designed API for the developer, uh, side of things, if the business side of the of the uh, equation 
doesn't really pick up on it, you're going to get get the funding for it. You're not going to get the spend for it, whatever it may be. What's the happy medium here as far as that goes for API strategy and design? Yeah, for for us, we spent uh, probably two months before we wrote any code uh, just planning what our developer experience would be. Um, we knew that you know, we wanted to offer flexibility to uh, select data from schemas in responses and how we made that happen would impact billing since different fields get charged at different rates. Uh, and so we had we had to know ahead of time how we wanted to enable that to make sure that the billing experience was good for customers, that the you know, latency and you know, resolution of those fields was fast. Uh, and so like before, yeah, you know, we spent a very long time before we wrote any code, uh, just walking through those things, you know, similar, I'll say this later, but also, but like, Similar to any UI product, you know, you are designing something. Uh, you need to do testing. You need to before you write anything, uh, because kind of once you put out an API, it's almost written in stone. Uh, once you get customers on it, and at some level, uh, so it's very important. You know, I, think, or I think it was the most critical thing that we did at the beginning was take a step back, not rush to pushing something out uh, that we would be stuck with. Yeah, yeah, I think that's a great uh, analogy comparing to user interface design. This is something you can't really fix after the fact very well if you don't get it right in the beginning and very much similar for uh, APIs. APIs also, though, are part of a, a larger ecosystem. You mentioned the UX that calls the API is an important factor and similarly the backend systems for many companies that the APIs access and, and integrate with to provide that great experience are things that also need to be looked at very carefully. If you're going to have a great customer experience, it's not just the user interface, but how that user interface accesses the APIs that access the backends and interact with the data that powers those APIs. So I would just add to that, which I think is a great analogy that you need to do the design work up front as much as possible, but you also want to consider the where that API fits in the whole, in the whole ecosystem of the user interface back to the server. We have a... Uh question from the chat, and I think this one's relevant to where we're talking right now. We're talking about API design specs. What, as far as the, you know, and this may, you guys may have different answers to this, but, uh, you know, there are different standards, various standards that are out there now and have been on API designs. How do those standards and what are the key standards and how did some of them change as you approached and pivoted your API design? Uh, well, I could start. I guess I brought yeah. it up, so <laughs> I'll start on it. I think it helps make the design, simplify the design process because if you think about the Open API standard and the recently within the last year released mm -hmm. Async API standard, right. both of them provide a great framework to fill in, uh, if you will, for how you do a design. So you have the the framework when you do the design. You, your the standard sort of shows you the pieces that you need for the design. And on top of that, uh, because people start to build tools on the standards, you get uh, a lot of benefit from generating code or code that generates the standards. You get tests that you can generate. So it just sort of streamlines the whole process uh, from you know, beginning to, to end by having that framework. Yeah, and I think the, the standards provide a good base, uh, but then there's plenty of room to uh, make decisions on top of the base, you know, authentication, path structure, response formats, um, schemas, like th th there are ways you can riff, but I think what the important part is being consistent. Uh, you, know, you pick a baseline standard and then whatever you do on top of that should be internally consistent across all of your APIs. If you, you know, if you have multiple, they should behave the same way. The user should expect the same thing. Uh, and so, picking a base standard and then your own standards on top of that that you enforce for all of your APIs is important for your your, your developer experience. Yeah, let's let's talk a little bit about, you know, further in on the design now. So you have an API project, as Kyle, as you mentioned, you know, you guys didn't write code for months, you know, talking through the entire project itself before it's there. Now you have an API out in the wild, right? You've designed an API, you've strategized around building this API before that, and now you put this API out there, whether it's for monetization purposes or just to you know, get more users on your on your system. Um, 
what do you guys, uh, how is the role, and this may be how it's used, uh, you know, in your companies or how you may see it being used, or ideally, the role of feedback, the role of um, the user experience and how that user or those users um, are seeing your API and how do you guys integrate that feedback into uh, you know ongoing design or ongoing uh, iterations? Okay. Uh, for us, it's a you know a multi-tiered approach. Uh, we have sales engineers who are sitting with customers before they buy, uh, mm -hmm. collecting feedback on functionality design, pulling that in. We have our customer support engineers who are sitting with customers after they've purchased. Uh, and collecting feedback from active customers. Uh, and we have weekly uh, weekly sync meetings with both those teams from the product and engineering side uh, to listen to feedback, um, ingest those, put them on our board, you know, on our on our backlog or on our future design plans, and then and work that back out to the customer um, as, as we move along. Um, but I think it's important for us to have people constantly communicating with customers and then and turning that crank continually. We, we well, we're, we're a little, it's a little bit different take for us. We're working on products that enable API development, deployment, uh, and management. We're working on a next gen API management product called uh, Corio. And we think about this in terms of getting product iterations out. It's in beta right now. And so we encourage our customers who've got API products of their own to take a common, a similar approach is a software product company would take to think about APIs uh, and applications, digital applications as products, get them out there, get the feedback, iterate, put in the agile deployment process that allows you to churn, uh, churn, <laughs> churn is the wrong word, iterate quickly and get the feedback quickly and, and put it in, incorporate and get it back out. So I think the same kinds of things that software companies have started to do with pushing out betas and getting reactions, getting feedback and tuning and tweaking are what we would uh, give advice to people creating digital apps and APIs that support them uh, as well. So let me ask you guys another question on, um, you know, in new design, APIs have been around for 20 years, right? Um, but we've really seen almost in the last, uh, 10 years, um, a really big uptake on APIs. And even in the last 18 months with the pandemic, um, we talked about this in, in some of the fireside chats we did yesterday, just the acceleration that you've started to see with utilizing more and more APIs. Um, and what at least we've seen on our side, um, APIs have kind of gone through this, uh, uh, they, they, they were very hot back in the day in 2000, let's say 12 and 13, you had lots of API startups, they got consolidated, they got pulled into a lot of bigger companies. Um, but what we're starting to see again today is a uh, resurgence around APIs and their usability. And the idea that, you know, many, many more companies are utilizing APIs to monetize. I think Kyle Foursquare is one of those companies that started doing it early on as far as monetizing an, an API and then Eric, WSO2 has been around the block for a while, um, building APIs or helping companies build out APIs, understanding the API strategy for a long time. Um, what do you guys see as some of the newer technologies and architectures and how do they play in to designing API projects, right? So um, APIs, like I said, have been around for 20 years, but Kubernetes has not, right? Uh, microservices has not. Um, how do those new technologies and architectures and ones that are all, you know, will be coming over the next couple of years play into and have an impact on API projects and innovation or don't they? Kyle, you want to take this one? Uh, I was going to kick this one over to Eric. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I think follow up, but yeah. Yeah. So it, it is interesting. Uh, as you said, you know, 20 years ago, APIs were existing, but we also had SOAP and WSDL and different ways of communicating on uh, over the internet and even internally. But I think the world has really moved much more toward the web programming model than even 10, 15 years ago. And I think a lot of that has to do with success of the cloud. Uh, cloud native programming is really built on the same kind of model of state sharing and RESTful APIs as uh, the web is based on. So the web is kind of 
come into the enterprise, meaning that uh, as we move more and more to the cloud and microservices with APIs, we're moving more and more to kind of a web programming model and APIs are really becoming the programmable web as you know, we sort of saw years ago, but now it's really uh, settled in and the standards have evolved to the point at which this is really becoming a, a reality. I think another another interesting aspect of this is the proliferation of different types of APIs that have come out as well. You know, have GraphQL uh, types of APIs in addition to HTTP based ones. You have gRPC types of APIs and you have async APIs, which I think is a huge step forward and brings in a whole uh, additional category of applications to the API world. So I think we're seeing a lot of that that great development. And as you mentioned with Kubernetes and, and the cloud, you also have the automated deployment that allows you to get into these agile feed, feedback loops with your microservices and break the problem up into discrete uh, discrete functions, which really also seems to help uh, spur the APIs and need for more APIs. Yeah, and then when we see that in what we're building, and that you know we we deploy new versions of our API product every other day, essentially, um, we can continually make improvements. Uh, you know, whether it be behind the scenes, not schema breaking, but we can constantly turn on improvements whenever we get feedback, uh, focus on latency, things like that. Uh, GraphQL is one that you know, we, we teetered on the edge of deciding to use GraphQL, but I think you know, the growth of that in market will change things in the future as the tooling around it gets more mature. Uh, I think the flexibility that it offers developers has the opportunity to change thing once change things once the tool the tooling catches up for the more mainstream. I think it's still my my take is that's still a little bit too uh, expert. No, well, yeah, I, I, I agree. I think it's still early days because you have a whole GraphQL server side that you have to set up, and there's a, not enough help yet in the tooling for that. I agree. Uh, on the other side, the async APIs though bolt right into an existing paradigm with the messaging and web sockets. And so I think that's likely to take off much more quickly. Uh, we have time for one more question, guys. Um, and we've got, and it was something I was going to touch on, but we, our last two questions in the chat uh, have to do with security. And it's something that we've seen on our side uh, in tracking the API economy and the API industry for the last 10 years, that at the beginning, it was all about data and getting the data outside of the enterprise or outside of the company um, and being able to share it. Um, but we've now come sort of full circle. And because there are so many uh, instances we hear about sort of on a you know almost weekly basis of a security breach through an API that was just unprotected, um, let's talk a little bit about security and API security and how important that is. Uh, so one of the questions was, do you build API security into the APIs from the beginning, or is it something you guys bolt on um, at the end? And do you, you know, use things like the OWASP uh, API top 10? Um, how do you guys treat security? And is it becoming, and are you seeing it becoming a more important issue, um, both from the user side and then also from the, um, you know, the customer side? So Eric, we'll start with you on this one. Sure. I was working in the security field at City just before joining uh, WSO2, and we had published a lot of APIs, and API security was a big, big topic for us. We would have cases where dev teams would push an API out without talking with the security team, and it was a big effort. So, yeah, the question about getting it done first, uh, absolutely, and it's similar, again, to use the UI design as something that's very, very hard to retrofit if you don't design for it in the beginning. We're seeing, uh, I'm seeing a kind of a trend called uh, security as code that helps apply to this problem by providing code libraries early in the development cycle to help developers who may not have a lot of skills or background in security, put it in uh, right there so that you have conformance to company security policies and standards in the code that you're building for the APIs uh, before you deploy them. And I think that's really gonna help once we see that trend uh, take off more. Kyle? Okay. Yeah, and for us, you know, in the in the months of planning that I mentioned, uh, our security team was heavily involved. You know, a lot around the uh, authentication and creation of tokens and resource asset access, uh, and you know, they preached pretty hard the OWASP top ten. Make sure that we are uh, 
sticking sticking to that, uh, they were very integral to our original design. So, you know, like Eric said, from the start, uh, security is important. Even even if you think you're just providing read only services and no user PII or anything, uh, you know, it's a good conversation to have. Yeah, if they can break in, they will. <laughs> no matter what it is, and you never know where they're going to go once they do that, right? So, exactly, absolutely. Okay, guys, uh, I think that's all the time we have. I uh, appreciate you guys joining uh, me. The nice high level discussion on API design and uh, uh, API project management. Um, thanks again to you, Eric, and to you, Kyle, uh, for being here uh, at the uh, fireside chat. Uh, we will be back on the main stage in about three minutes for our next talk. So, again, uh, from the main stage, thanks again. Thanks. Right. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Bye. See ya.